Welcome traders to Tickmill's weekly market outlook with me Patrick Munley. For week commencing the 26th of April in the US, the week ahead is a busy one. It should encompass what should be a very strong first quarter 21 US GDP growth, perhaps as high as 7% quarter on quarter annualized. But a Fed still positioned very dovishly at Wednesday's FOMC meeting. Wednesday will also see Joe Biden's first speech to a joint session of Congress, where we might hear more about his plans to raise taxes, including a doubling of capital gains tax for those earning over $1 million per annum. It is also a big week for first quarter tech earnings, a sector perhaps most exposed to a capital gains tax hike after enjoying stellar equity returns over the past year. On balance, I think the dollar uh, is going to uh, edge lower at the start of the week, especially where speculation over tax hikes to take some steam out of the US overheating debate in the second quarter. Also look for second tier US data in the form of March DGOs, April consumer confidence and the March core PCE deflator expected to jump 1.8% year on year from 1.4%. Month end rebalancing flows may also move against the dollar this week since both the US equity and bond benchmarks have outperformed in April. So, from a technical perspective, as discussed in the weekly analysis, I'm looking for another leg lower in the dollar at the, into the month end. And I'm looking for the dollar to test this 90.25 ascending trend line support, a third test, because as, uh, as I mentioned in Thursday's session, 90% uh, of the time, the period from the 1st of May to the 28th of May has tended to be positive for the dollar over the past 10 years. So if we get into this 1920 zone, watch for bullish reversal patterns to set long positions, looking for at least a three wave corrective move back into the 92.43 area. However, if we don't hold the trend line support and, uh, and the dollar leaks lower, then I'd be looking for the dollar to test uh, back into the 89.65 and potentially then take out the uh, prior cycle lows at 89.22 and then we can look at the potential that we have a wave 4 high in place and then we would start to look at a patterns to trade at the wave 5 to the downside. But first port of call is going to be watching this 90.30 test and see if we can get a correction first. Uh, the week ahead in the Eurozone also sees first quarter 21 GDP. This is widely expected to contract and signal a second technical recession within a year. But this is old news, however. Instead, Eurozone confidence is picking up sharply, as evidenced in Friday's flash April PMI release, and should be echoed in Monday's German EFO readings. We'll also get our first look at April Eurozone inflation, expected to jump 1.6% year over year from 1.3% on base effects. The rise in inflation should shed a little more light on the European Central Bank debate ahead of the June meeting where the hawks would want to see tapering of more aggressive weekly pet purchases. Indeed, there were moments over the last week where the euro rates market were getting excited about tighter ECB policy. We'll also see a whole array of ECB speakers over the next week, and we, you should expect more focus on EU national spending plans than the Carla Schuller Constitutional Court has allowed the ratification of the EU fiscal stimulus plan to proceed. Also, keep a lookout for any fresh German opinion polls where it looks like further gains for the Greens would be treated with, uh, with a positive reaction from the markets. From a technical perspective, as with the dollar index, the euro is about to test its monthly range resistance and the descending trend line resistance. And I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns in around 12120 120 for short positions to initially target a corrective move back to test 1950 as support. If we don't see any resistance at the 2125 area, then look for prices to extend up into the 2239 before we likely see a corrective move to ensue. Uh, dollar yen downside has uh, surprised market participants as it picks up steam, even though the decline in US yields has stabilized and global equity markets remain not too far from, uh, from their highs, especially with Friday's close. It's really hard to make sense at, uh, of the dollar yen at the moment. The week ahead sees a focus on Tuesday's Bank of Japan meeting, the first since its strategy changed to more flexible asset purchases. In reality, the declining global yields and JGB yields means the BOJ has not had to be too active here. 
The BOJ meeting will also see the release of its outlook report and a possible upward revision to growth forecast despite Japan's current battle with COVID. As an aside, the BOJ, in conjunction with other central banks on Friday, agreed to discontinue the 84-day dollar swap with the Fed, a welcome recognition that US dollar funding markets have returned to normality. From a technical perspective, uh, dollar yen has put in the test of this uh, 107.50 trend line support. I'm watching we got a nice reaction. Didn't uh, didn't flip the charts bullish as per the five period VWAP. Uh, but let's see if we can consolidate and get some follow through into the uh, the early part of the week. And there's an opportunity to set long positions. I think to at least test back into this 109.30 uh, area. If we take out the trend line support, then look for prices to extend lower to test monthly range support down to 106.30. This week's uh, data flow out of the UK was once again supported for sterling. Uh, strong retail sales, good PMIs, inflation rising, although slightly below expectations, and unemployment edging lower all endorsed the strong recovery narrative in the country. The data calendar next week is instead very quiet and no Bank of England officials are scheduled to speak. With COVID-19 cases rising again across the world and the UK having recently relaxed containment measures, incoming contagion hospitalisation data in the UK will be key to test the effectiveness of the country's vaccination program and ultimately drive expectations about the economic recovery. So from a technical perspective, Sterling has pulled back into the support area, uh, the monthly pivot here, 138, and uh, we've got a re bullish reversal um, on Friday. Again, didn't quite eclipse the uh, five period VWAP as a confirmation, but we'll see if we can consolidate uh, into the early part of the week, that should set up another retest of 140, where I'd expect to see resistance again in a range trade environment for now. However, if we do take out uh, this 137.85 as support, look for a move to test range support back down to 136.64. And lastly, uh, in Australia, the China-Australian relations are back in focus, as it's once again no good news for the Aussie dollar. The decision by the Australian government to scrap the Belt and Road Initiative that would have allowed increased presence of Chinese company in Victoria's infrastructure projects is another worrying signal that the diplomatic and trade relations between the two countries are still fragile. The main risk for the Aussie is that China retaliates in the coming days by hitting Australian exports again. A new lockdown in Perth on the back of rising virus numbers may also cause some short-term headwinds. At the same time, there are a few factors offering support to the currency. Iron ore prices have remained supportive after a long rally, and regardless of the crude's up and downs, uh, dollar has remained pressured and China's data flow has been broadly supportive so far. On the latter, Friday's PMIs out of China may drive a reaction to the China-sensitive currencies. Earlier in the week, Australia's CPI for the first quarter will be in focus. Consensus expectations are for headline inflation to climb to 1.4 from 0.9%. The bar set by the Reserve Bank of Australia with its inflation target is 2.5%. Are there any signs of inflation recovery? More than expected may cast some doubt on how long the RBA's ultra dovish tone can reasonably last. From a technical perspective, the uh, Aussie dollar has been trading within a relatively tight range here. Look for any pop up into the 78.10 to 78.20 area to find resistance as we look to retest range support at the moment back to 76.70. Um, if we take out this, uh, the high here at 78.21, then I'd be looking for symmetry swing resistance back into the old highs here at the 80 level. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 26th of April. As always, traders, be sure to join me on Thursday for live market analysis where I cover over 20 charts in real time, looking at actionable setups for the days ahead. Okay, traders, as always, have a great week. Thanks very much.